Yes. <laughs> you have to un you have to <laughs> you have to add yourself in with the volume. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm like, okay. How do I, I was literally like here for like five minutes because I don't Zoom. And so I was like, I need to set the Zoom up and make sure that I can get on. And so I was like, okay, let me, and I'm like, okay, it's uh, the screen's open. So, but my kids do it for school, so. I, I know, I always get kind of like, not nervous, but I'm like always like very focused trying to get on the Zoom, you know? Okay. No, no, that's how I felt. I was like, okay, let yeah. me just make sure I know how to do this because I do FaceTime all the time. So. Yeah. Hi, Sage. Hi. <laughs> so are we waiting on Michelle? Guess what? <laughs> so we're, <laughs> we're waiting on Michelle. <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love your dress. Oh my gosh, it has little surfers on it. I love that. I know, <laughs> I wore my little shells and my like Tahitian pearl necklace. Um, it was so funny because I'm down, I, you know, I rented a guest house yeah. down by the beach. So I'm down here and I was like, oh man, I wish I had like my, you know, red surfboard that I have up at my house in the no. mountains. And like, I was like, I wonder if I still like, too bad we don't still have like the bathing suits and bikinis because I'm going to walk out like. I know, Michelle. Right What's up? No ah! case. It's annoying. Ah, I mean, you wonderful creatures. Hello. Look at you. You're a mama now. How many kids do you have now? Two. Two. Two beautiful creatures. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so cool. We need oh, like wow. Guys, I feel like emotional seeing your faces. I know. This is so great. <laughs> this is so great. Thank you for doing this. I survived my 20s. <laughs> I know you're there. You did it. I'm still here. <laughs> right? Thank God. I think I've met my goal. <laughs> yes, you're like, I did it. No, I remember you would be like, you were like 23 and you're like, I got to be speeding around in the Jeep Cherokee Reds while you're like, I'm getting you to be rented the Ford Mustang. You're like, I got to go. I'm, I'm getting older. You're like 23. You're like, there's a lot, there's a lot I got to do. I'm already getting older. And I'm like, you're, you're 23. You're 23. You're like speeding everywhere. So <laughs> I know. I remember that Mustang so well. <laughs> Michelle's oh Mustang. My they God. got us all Jeep Cherokees. And was like, hell to the no. I'm getting myself. A Mustang. I gotta say, man, I, I don't know that girl anymore. I mean, she was nuts. <laughs> so fun, though. So fun. That's what I mean, 20s are, all, you know? That's what 20s are. You gotta get a little crazy in your 20s. Yeah. Otherwise, what are they? You more? guys look, you guys look amazing. So do you guys. Look amazing, too. Yeah, man. Damn. You know, aging yeah, with Yeah, we, we got some good genes over here. I know. Blue Crush Part 2. Really, for real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's Mika? I know. Mika. You know what's so crazy, you guys? I watched the movie last night. You did? Who oh, did? My gosh, oh my I should have read it. I haven't seen it in like 15 years. I'm not kidding. Same. Yeah. It's so is it good. Wild to see. Wild. It is it's so pretty insane. Wild. You guys have to watch. You it. were a baby. I mean, I was 18. Yeah. Mika was a kid too. Yeah. And Sonoy, I mean, I know. You, know, I have you were a surfer eat. chick. You were a surfer bum back then. I totally <laughs> was. I know. I know. I'm actually trying to get a little bit back to that again now. Like, cause I like my daughter is about to turn nine. My son just turned 10. And so I'm like, all right, you guys are good. Like I'm going to go surfing now. Like, I mean, I <laughs> like our duty on the beach. So like the amount of actual surf time that I've gotten has been so minimal. So now I'm Aww. like, all right, I'm, I'm actually going to go surfing. And it's been so great. So that's why I'm down here in San Diego, just trying to get more ocean time. Well, I know oh, my screen froze. Can you guys? Yeah, you froze. You froze very cool, though. You're like this. <laughs> um, I've been seeing all my friends, like, in outdoor spaces. 
Um, okay. We, you know, we don't, we don't, like, if you've been tested, we don't wear masks around each other. And that's kind of like how I've survived the Got last it. couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. And then I drive really, really far for, like, nature treks because during quarantine, all the nature treks, they, they were packed. You know, it was, like, people everywhere. And so it was, like, I'm trying to get away from people. That's why I'm, like, <laughs> you need to so come to and see me up in Big Bear. Big Bear, I forget you love that. You love that. Wait, um, no, Michelle, yeah. will you tell Sonoy what you're doing? What is she oh, doing? I'm eating chunks. <laughs> See, chunks is great. Some chunks. Aura. Oh, oh yo, <laughs> give me food. Where is wait, it? Where is wait, it? Wait, Joey, this reminds me. Do you remember when you had the um, the cat, the blind cat? Yeah. You guys, <laughs> Kate and I walk by, and there's Bob Marley blasting from. Michelle's room and you look in there and there's this blind cat that she'd rescued off the street just sitting there dude I hit rocking him. itself I hit him with my car what I was traumatized I hit the poor thing with my car and I was like oh my god oh my god I need to nurture you back to health I can't have your death on my conscience <laughs> <laughs> and the yeah. that you played Bob Marley for it when you had to go to set <laughs> yeah. was amazing that I was like hated me <laughs> It's like, there's a cat in Michelle's room. I'm like, I know. I gave him one meal and he ran away. Oh. Yeah. I feel like I was always the young one as well, being like, sit away. <laughs> there's a cat. There's a cat in Michelle's room. So he just bought Marley Blasting. There's a cat in there. So funny. <laughs> so many good times. God. Yeah. Mm. Wow. It was a trip to watch the movie again. I'll tell you that. Like, my a- kids have still never seen it. No way. I know. I need to have a movie night with them. And- That's crazy. Sonoy. I know. <laughs> Why would you do I that? Know. I know. Maybe, maybe, maybe today's the day where I, yes. I have them. <laughs> Dude, are you kidding? You both? I haven't watched it in forever. They never, they haven't done anything that beautiful in a very long time. I mean, like freaking Baywatch is your answer to summer fun. Come on, guys. I know. Really? And like, and, and the beauty that was captured there. I mean, you know, it was a really, really, really uh, precious moment. Yeah. I know. It really I was think there, it, there needs to be more movies like that, you know? I feel like everything's so violent and fucking crazy. There's nothing just about, like, fun and, like, summer. And, so good. Such a yeah. feel-good movie and really captured the essence of what the North Shore represents. Like, I mean, hats off to Brian Grazer and John Stockwell for that because they were so adamant about keeping it real and the Vulcan party. You know, everyone's like, that looked like a real party. I'm like, it was. They basically <laughs> recreated. I tell people all the time, like, that was a Vulcan party. They had signs like, if you enter this set, you're agreeing to be part of the film. I mean, they really did a great, great job at that. Granted, there was like, you know, you can't have alcohol. And everyone was like, what? Yeah, they're like, uh, I feel like. Uh, okay, sure. <laughs> I feel like that was so much a part of the magic because like I'm sure it's similarly for you guys I get out of all well Michelle it might be Fast and Furious for you because you've got so many of those great movies but I feel like for me Blue Crush is the one that everyone and particularly like young girls like always come up to me and say like you inspired me to do this and like oh you know, you guys are all heroes, and like it's so incredible like I love that when we were all doing the movie I mean we were just like so in it you know yeah just make it real and and try and make it great and and we were just like in, at least from my, in my opinion in many ways like living the movie you know like, totally so I didn't have I couldn't foresee at that time like, um, the impact it would have on all these like young women you know so good and and like i thought it was great how they made us all live together they were like we want you all to live in the same house oh my house. god i felt so bad for you guys having to live in here. <laughs> no way that was so great it was <laughs> so much fun we we're like family for three months it was yeah. amazing yeah. it was so great it's like one of so my awesome. favorite life experiences i loved it yeah so man. great right now i almost sunset. I almost died a few times, man, being trained. What was his name? Oh my God, he was so sweet. The Green Beret guy. Uh, oh my God, he was. Aaron? No, not Brian Kailana. He was. He was. He was the main guy that was training everybody. He's a king. And he is the best um, of the water. Yeah, yeah, but you hogged him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. Oh, she talking about Brock? 
No, Brock. No. Brock. Brock. No, no you don't remember the other guy? Uh, he was really sweet. Uh, Green Beret, ex Green Beret guy. Um, he was helping train us too. Huh? I was going to say, Sinoy, you know, blonde, right? Yeah, he had blonde hair. He looked like a Ken doll, actually. <laughs> Yeah, he had me free. He had me surfing like six foot waves, and I'm oh like, I don't know gosh. how to surf. Reef, ah! <laughs> <laughs> rope around my neck. Ah! <laughs> I'm like, dude, this is winter time. I'm at the, one of the craziest surf spots in the world. What the hell am I doing here with this guy who's on the shore trying to tell me what to do? <laughs> so so great <laughs> they really did they threw they threw you girls out there man that was one of yeah. those things where i was like okay here we go but we had the best water team around us that nothing was going to happen i mean kate when they had you out at pipeline i mean that was wow. a, those were some solid legit days I Yo. mean, really really i mean you take one set that swings wide and it just comes from the outer reef and it's like you're getting caught on the inside it's up to the watermen to literally save your life in that situation well, like that, those yeah. that was the crazy that was legit that was real deal i have i have those memories like in my brain like obviously forever because it was just so intense but in watching the movie again i realized like michelle do you remember that day the day in the jet ski where you were like, taking me training and I was like towing into these waves. <laughs> we were like, what? Yeah, that was hardcore, man. She <laughs> loved that jet ski. They have the pipe stops in a way, you know? Oh, yeah, so I mean, I remember ruining one of the best shots in the movie <laughs> by looking because I was towing, uh, uh, was it was it Rochelle Ballard? Rochelle. <clears throat> yeah, I was towing Rochelle. <clears throat> and uh, That's so one of the biggest wave I have ever seen in my life <laughs> was behind me. And I was like, yo, I'm too close. And I kept <gasps> looking at the, and they were like, don't look, don't look. And I'm like, what do you mean, don't look? <laughs> come get my ass what the hell and i ruined the shot and then they're like and then all you see is the director just go no oh. because i'm looking at the camera and i'm like yo do you see this i know well actually yeah am i good am i good i mean you guys you guys <laughs> because actually like one of the questions i get often and even a friend of mine when i when i texted her last night she was the movie, and i said oh my god i just watched the movie for the first time in 15 years and i said all those waves like other than the very very last one with me in the barrel like none of it was green screen i like, know people ask that now they're like how much was green screen i'm like none of, like we were like if you see us in out of pipe or like michelle's towing me at avalanche like we were out there <laughs> like that's oh my gosh that's i remember yeah i remember you're like i did a tow in today i'm like this is just unheard of like this is, doesn't even happen can you just went for it with all of that so they just did such a good job with that <sighs> Um, I felt bad, man. I left Rochelle Ballard. <laughs> I like, I sped up and I left her there. <laughs> I, was like, so, I was like, sorry, oh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> like, I gotta go. You know how to handle this. I, yeah, I you're good. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, go. I felt so bad, man. I was such oh, a loser. How so did I mess that up? <laughs> I feel bad about that. To be fair though, Sinoy, you were thrown into the deep end with acting because I, when I rewatched the movie, because that was your first gig, right? Yeah. So like, yeah. when I watched the movie last night, I was like, she, you are so good in the movie. She's so natural. I mean, like, for as much as you're saying that about us in the water, I mean, you were like literally out of your element in that sense. And I remember like yeah. many conversations we had where you were like, do you remember? Like, you were like, I don't know, like, I can't like being on set. I'm like, well, you just have to. <laughs> You just do it. Like, I want to but you can't. Well, you know, it's interesting because I originally I read for the role that Michelle played, Eden, and Lena wasn't developed. So it was it was nice. They kind of met me in the middle on that, where they're like, you know, just fly off the cuff on some of this. We don't have her all the way written. So it gave me a lot of freedom to just kind of like bring some authenticity and go, well, this is kind of how we talk, you know? Totally. And and um, it was it was just so much fun. But I remember going through that whole audition process. Originally, Universal was like, um, what? <laughs> Brian Grazer and John Stockwell were like, hey, 
we love this girl. She's great. And they're like, she's never done anything. Like the, the budget behind this film is she's going to get on a set and completely tank. Like this is such a risk. And so I'm so grateful they gave me that chance. It's really one of the best, best experiences I've ever had. And I think oh we really God. did. You, you have to show your kids. I mean, you were so I natural. I so know. Natural. I will. I will. I, you know, it's just funny. I, just haven't watched it in so long and we're always just busy and doing life and I running around I, and I do I need to do an, a movie night with them maybe maybe it's this weekend I'll do it you will bring them I've been taking them surfing I've been taking them out they love it they go down here and you know the only thing that's I mean it's weird because in Hawaii you grow up with like sea urchins and like there's more like sharks kind of around there and here it's like stingrays you know it's like I'm just like careful for the stingrays it's just I didn't, I didn't grow up with that, you know, so it's a whole new thing down here. Have you been going back at all? Um, I typically go back every summer, but uh, I'm in mm. San Diego now because I have to, when it's, when it's hot and it's summer, I need to be at the ocean. Winter, yeah. I'm snowboarding, you know? <laughs> Kauai, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, I go back man. to Kauai and I t I'm out there all summer long and, um, now though with all of this i'm like oh, i'm just gonna stay in california i want to be able to get my car and drive to places and not be stuck on an island right I'm now like tripping out man you're all grown up you're I like know. a woman we all like, are. Go on. yeah it's I crazy know. I, I know the same thing. I like, having... like both but you still look the same kate you haven't changed a lot <laughs> i know <list>. kate, <laughs> kate i know we need your secret <laughs> what the hell I, I i look so much different i was watching that and i was like oh my you do not look so much different. You had a little baby fat. That's about it. We all know the craft service was so good. We were all like 10 pounds heavier easily. So no, good. We, I was just mopping craft service all day. I looked at it by the end of the film like, wow. I Kyborg was like, wow, girl. You being really afraid of sharks. I still am. And you know what? In November, if this quarantine situation isn't too crazy, I'm facing that fear. I'm doing like a Quibi show about about diving in with the sharks. They're gonna put like a whole, it's called 10 ton chunk. So hopefully I'll be able to do it. I missed my window for Australia cause, cause you know, obviously the COVID-19 hit, but I'll be doing it in Mexico. And, and this would be facing off with my biggest fear. Cause that's the wow. only one I have left. Yeah. The only one I have left is the deep ocean and, and sharks. Yeah, I, love that. I love that you're doing that. That is really, I'm really crazy. Great. I love that. Hopefully, Let us hopefully, know. I'll, hopefully I'll live to talk about it. <laughs> you, was, it was it no cage? No, of course. Are you kidding me? I'm not stupid. <gasps> I'm not looking to commit suicide. <laughs> so then you'll be fine. If you're in a cage, you'll be, you'll be fine. <laughs> it's fine. You have a cage. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's change the subject, guys. <laughs> yeah, gals. <laughs> oh, so good. Just annoying because I, I was trying to remember like cause my audition process or like me getting that role was so intensive. Like why? Like, well, I often get asked the question, you know, did you know how to learn to surf before the movie? And like I had never touched a surfboard before getting the role in that movie. So when you were killing it by the time you were in it. Well, but thank you. But you know, when I when I auditioned for it, you know, I, I got called back quite a few times, um, you know, just reading. And then finally, like Brian and John were like, look, we love your reading, but you know, we, we like this role, like it's obviously a prerequisite for this girl to serve, you know, obviously. And right. so I, I was so in love with this character. Cause like I was 18 years old. I just moved into um, LA from Boston where I'm from. And all the roles I were reading were like dumb girls, or like two women, or like popular girls or whatever. And I was like, yeah, you know, I was like, I don't, I, I just didn't relate. And then when I got this role, I was like, yeah, I, I love this girl. Like I just like felt yeah. I don't know, that yeah. identity to her. And so I just like when they said that they were gonna look at like real surfers, I ended up going to the yellow pages and. Uh, finding a surf instructor in Malibu and learning to surf for like four weeks while they audition. Oh, wow. That's dope. I didn't know that. I remember that. I remember you doing that to get comfortable with yeah. being in the ocean and being in the water. And then I remember actually when I came in, I think it was my second audition, and I sat next to you. Yes. I sat next to you and I didn't know what, you know, I'm in there and we're in there with all these actresses and then there were a few surfer girls 
And I was like, and we're just, I just remember talking, you know, we're just talking and we hit it <laughs> off. And, and um, I know that they were reading some real surfers up against some actresses to see how believable the actresses were standing next to a real surfer. Right. And then we ended up having to go to another audition, like down at Malibu, so they could see how all the girls that said they could surf actually were in the water because every girl said they could surf. And then that was like, I think one of the most crucial parts of the audition process was like, okay, they can hang and they can handle in the water, which you totally did. I remember, you know, you were out there and paddling around. <laughs> no, I, I bombed that. <laughs> I thought I was like, there's no way I'm going to get this because I remember I was out because it was, I think it was Brian's surf instructor that like had all of us in the water. And and I'd been like, really, like literally seven days a week, you know, seven hours a day, like <laughs> practicing this. And so I thought it was gonna be like my big moment in the water. And Greg got my show. I was, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like paddle out. Like, go. And like literally just bombed it. Like fell like time after time after time. I like ate shit. It's like, I swear I've been doing this for a and, like, <laughs> and I was like, there's no way I'm gonna get this. And like the story goes that the surf instructor said to to Brian and John, who were like, "Dude, like, do you think she like can she pull this off?" Because, you know, we all, as we all know, it was like a big budget, you know, studio movie. Yeah. Like it was like make or break with me being able to like, pull off being a you know a real surf girl. And the surf instructor said, "You're not gonna. You, I I would guarantee you that you're not gonna meet someone more determined." And <laughs> that, totally and that was such guys oh, yeah and i think that's how i got the role and i often tell you know emerging artists like when they say do you have any advice i always say like you got to have grit man you know because it's yeah like, yeah of, like, for sure you know, what you're yeah you know, what you're looking to play you got to have grit well also that is such a huge key element in Anne marie's character is the determination you know yeah. that ends up shining through so it's like that was so so incredibly important that element because i think there's there's a lot of faces that could have gone in and been like yeah rah, rah, and there wouldn't have been the heartbeat behind the character to really like connect and resonate with who Anne marie really was which you were able to bring and obviously you came through on the surfing end too you're like i'm gonna get this oh my gosh. I, I watched the movie and literally just thought oh wow i was so serious in this movie and I <laughs> <laughs> Being like you were determined please pull, please pull this off please pull this off like, <laughs> I was going through my brain but you know what that's so that's it really captures the heart though of what was Anne Marie's age in that was she supposed to be 21 yeah. right around that age I, I like I, 19 yeah no 20 that's, well I think it was supposed to be around 21 because I remember Michelle I, I'd forgotten this scene which led to the Vulcan party scene was you and I had come in from and uh, you go into the fridge and you're like, beers are gone. <laughs> and I was like, Penny! <laughs> <laughs> oh, beers Mika, you know she's directing now. No! Yeah, dude. Oh, amazing. That's Good so her. cool. She was so Yeah, cool. I'm so happy for her, man. We need more women out there, like, yeah. making yeah, stories. Um, I really miss that that water, and I miss that island. There's something really magical about Hawaii. Yeah, I really um, I need, crave like, it sometimes. We need a real reunion back out there. You know, just, oh like, my go god, out and do that would be when this all settles down, God willing, it does. <laughs> we back, need to go back out there. I've been back a few times, and I always. I mean, I'm still playing with Ryan. Ryan. I love that. That's so He's, awesome. Brian Kailana's <laughs> the man. <laughs> yes. Yep. So he's such a special part of that island. Yeah. And that movie oh, has wow. fingerprints all over it, you know? Yeah, so, man. I remember learning about the culture and being astounded um, by how crazy far back it goes and like just to see the the that the natives 
not only survive but thrive and hold it down for their for their for their environment you know i there, there was a certain kind of respect that i had uh, that i still do obviously well then um, you have to go back out for lost yes it was so i mean nice. i spent I a lot of time, time in like, hawaii and i just I like just blown away huh i remember coming and seeing you when you were at doing lost and you had a house up in i want to say was it Pupakea or like near that north area. shore <laughs> yeah somewhere out yeah, there man. So i was like look at you you made it back to the island <laughs> It's something magical about the place and, and something really magical about the people too. It's, it's like a certain type of intelligence that you can't quantify. Mm -hmm. It's like intuitive and it has to do with nature and it's connected to even the stars. It's like everything's different on that island of Oahu. It's like the, the, the full moons are different. The sunsets are different. The, there's something about the energy of the young earthiness of it. That's just really beautiful. I, I think it was like, it. I want to go know, back. So <laughs> Speaking of full moons, I think it was the second night you got there and there was a full moon out at sunset. I'm like, I'm going skinny dipping out front. It's a full yes, moon. I'm, I'm like, jumping in the ocean. <laughs> I'm like, she belongs to Mother Nature, this one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle looked at me and she was like, what? I'm like, full moon. We're on the beach. Like, we should go swim. <laughs> Classic Jersey girl, like oh my god! <laughs> What's up with this hippie check? Like, okay, I'm like I'm thinking in my head. I was I was literally thinking in my head sharks. <laughs> like, they sharks, come out sharks, at night, sharks, don't sharks, they? Sharks. Is that when they feed? I don't understand. I remember uh, like, because the train. I'd often like I get asked about the training for that movie because it was so intense, you know. And mm -hmm. you know, I had to change my body type so much to like be believable yeah. oh you were ripped and uh we worked out so much yeah she was ripped for a toothpick <laughs> yep oh totally as ripped as a toothpick could get <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's so funny about that i mean what were you like 90 pounds wet <laughs> no <laughs> it's true i put on so much, so tiny. i put on so much muscle mass you did you <laughs> I, I, look, watch that movie again, and you're gonna be like, "Oh my god!" Like we were. No, no, no. you were toned, but you're you, you still. I mean, you've always been petite. That, well, that's the thing is that that movie. I think like because it was sort of the first role that people like were introduced to me, and I think they thought that that was like what I was like all the time. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> that was like seven hours a day of like surfing, rock running, running the beach weight training i mean it was oh. insane. it was insane i remember those workouts they were so painful for me i was hung over most of the time <laughs> <laughs> i was like why am i doing so oh michelle she'd be like get in her mustang where's michelle but can i be out on the balcony where's michelle? <laughs> she's out in town she's it's in town. To spare their town. town for as much as you partied you were ripped as well <laughs> like that was youth youth ripped me and and those darn workouts they made us do <laughs> and just I mean, surfing and being in in the ocean in general just puts so much weight on your body i mean it's like i've just yeah. from having kids and not being in there all the time 10 pounds lighter than i was in my 20s just I remember, not being in the ocean i remember always getting like really jealous of sanoi not getting belly rash <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what trick you had and you kept giving me the advice on how not to get yeah. belly rash what do you call it board board rash or whatever just rash yeah just <laughs> dude i don't know what technique you used but i was always so sad that like i had like my stomach entirely cut up from the sand getting in the wax and me having to you like, had your creams, you're like eh, how come your stomach is perfect and mine's full of scratches well it's just, it comes from it comes from just years of of exposing your skin to that so i think you just build up a tolerance to it wow. yeah and so i remember getting the calluses on my hip bones pretty early on Ooh, yeah oh wow. yeah yeah that's a rough one and the bruises and then, on the and then with cages. the wet shorts it's yeah. even worse <laughs> it's like shaking no um, I, I can't remember which one of you it was i i think it was you Sinor. no it may be i'm not sure but i remember like 
because I, I needed so many calories and I, I didn't, you know, there was like no nutritionist on that movie. I was just like eating as much as I possibly could. Cottage cheese and peanut butter. Cottage yeah, dude, I remember her with cottage cheese. Wait, she had melons too. Melons, but you remember one of the melons of ice cream. It was like three of Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but that's the thing. When you're on a diet, there's this one craving for sugar, and forget about it. You ice can't. cream. We ate so we had so much ice cream in our freezer at the house. Like at so all good. times, there was so much ice cream. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> like, home were, like tubs of ice cream <laughs> and peanut butter. I would put like peanut butter on it and whipped cream, and like it was just <laughs> like we ate so much. I mean, but we were. I mean, we did six day weeks. I, yeah. Yeah. We yeah, went, I mean, I joke all the time. I'm like, I don't always have the best work ethic. I'm like, this is the hardest thing I've ever worked in my life. Like, we, did. <laughs> we worked really, really, really hard. Like, I don't know how, Michelle, you had any energy to go out in town. She would, she would drive, you know, town is like an hour drive for anyone that's not familiar with the North Shore. To go out in town, it's like an hour drive from the North Shore into the city. Michelle would take her musket. I mean, I think all the cops knew Michelle. I knew they're like, oh, we've got Michelle Rodriguez again here. Pulled over because you would just fly. Ah, uh, yeah. I would your ticket it. And you'd go to back to 100. I got my driver's license at a pretty much at a racetrack. That's how I learned to drive. I mean, I got my driver's license, then hit the racetrack. What you do, right? So it, yeah, I mean, I thought it was normal. I thought this is how you do this. But then the North Shore, I have to say, everyone can attest to this. Everyone here can attest to this. The North Shore has its own time. Yes. Yeah. There, the pace in the North Shore is literally chill chill they drive chill they eat chill they <laughs> surf chill very very slow unless i'm in the water yeah oh. you were so cute sonoy with your little like hair things this oh yeah remember oh, she used to have oh, like oh, little pigtails all over the oh, place yeah i always did i you look like gwen stefani i still pull my <laughs> hair out of my face i mean i still i mean i did i did a class this morning so i have this back but um you have yeah. long hair now look how pretty i know it's so long i i cut that's it in beautiful order and then that's great then go, you know summer it's fun you're at the beach you're like in your bathing suit you're like oh my long hair <laughs> but, it's, but fall i cut it because it, i mean it grows like the weed so it's like and then in fall we're in like winter coats and you know, if I have this hair up on the mound when I'm snowboarding, it's literally, I've come down and it's like just ice. My whole hair, like this <laughs> full of ice. Guys, I have questions from Blue Crush fans. Oh, right on. Awesome. Well, Exciting. Can I just also say for the watching this in support of Surf Rider Foundation? Awesome. Yes, yeah, surf rider. And you know, obviously they're doing an incredible job. We're really excited to support them for this and so grateful. Awesome. That's beautiful. Um, shall I ask a few? Yeah. Yeah, That's go for it. <laughs> okay. Um some of these we already covered. So, uh, okay. Well, did you, so Maya Tay says, did you want to move to Hawaii after shooting the film? Uh, absolutely. I did. Absolutely. I definitely did. And I think that I kind of did, yeah. um, afterwards I ended up doing lost and, 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 and staying, you know, quite a bit there. Um, but I just love that place. It's just so magical. It's a special place. Yeah. I could live there easily. Yeah, very easily. It's just so damn expensive. <laughs> like for a good spot, you know what I mean, in oh, the yeah. North Shore. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a lot. I think everybody knows the secret. It's too late. <laughs> I know, I know. Right? We should have all gone in on it then, you know? Oh my god, forget about it. We would have found something amazing. What? I, when I went back recently, it was like a year ago, I tried to find the house we stayed in. I couldn't find it. Oh, do you think that maybe maybe they took it down and built a bigger one or something? It's, you know, I haven't been back to that house. I wonder if we could, I wonder if they rent that house out. That would be so fun. That would be so fun. That, that would be so fun. 
I haven't been back in so long. I would just cherish it. Oh, and Brian, too. Brian bought a house out there on the beach of yeah. Pipe. I wonder if he still has it. I'm sure he Brian, loves surfing. Brian, you're listening to this. Yeah. For reunion. Classic. What's up with John? I haven't heard from him in a very long time. Good he was so Malibu. talented, man. His wife, you know his wife, Malibu Farm, out of Malibu Pier. That's their restaurant. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. That their restaurant. It's doing so well. John is that's John beautiful. surfing. They live in Little Doom and he's doing great. No, that's oh, so cool, oh, man. Living the life. Yeah. So they've had, they've done really, really well with their restaurant. He did yeah. such that's a great job with this movie. Like, Sunoy, I have to say, like, reiterate that between him and Brian Fraser, like, watching the movie again, it's like they yep. were so dedicated to yep. the authenticity of, like, the surf life, the North Shore. Like, they were so. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. That team was super talented too. At times, John, because he shot guerrilla style, where it's like, nope, the sun's changing. We're going now, and they're like, what? We're just all set up up there for this whole other scene. He's like, we need to get this now, you know. And he really, he really, because he's a surfer, really understood. You get it when the waves are good. I don't care that that's up there. I mean, the amount of, I think, fights and stuff that kind of went on because he, you know, he would just reshift the entire day when they'd have the, the agenda all planned out, as we know, and we'd be in like, you know, hair and, hair and uh, whatever outfit we were supposed to be in the next. And they're like, get the girls changed. We need them out there now because the wind shift. I love time, that, though. Whatever. And it, it, it was I, I, why I, the film was what it was, is because it totally. really adapted with with the change of weather and the ocean, which which on an hour to hour basis, it changes in Hawaii. It's like, you could have rain, it could be sunny in the morning and then raining, raining the next hour. I mean, yeah. it could be blue skies like this and then in an hour it's raining. And he There's really something I appreciate about that hands-on yep. stuff too. I mean, just being somebody who, who, who comes from that realm of sci-fi, lots of, lots of sci-fi, I'm sorry, special effects work, yeah, you know, doing action movies and stuff, and I'll tell you, you know, the 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 one thing that I really appreciate about the early two thousands that is kind of gone now is the magic of like live action, mm -hmm. and like actually, you know, I mean, the most the most CGI that they did was that that pipeline bit where she's actually going through the yeah. tube, yeah, you know, and like Kate was saying before, you know, most of that stuff was just really shot live action, you know, yeah. Like, you know, Rochelle and Megan and yeah. all these really amazing Kayala, surfer yeah. kicks. Kayala! Kayala, take care! I heard she had a kid, too. Yeah, oh, that's that's amazing. I'm still I miss her and her Kayala. I love her so much. Man. She's she's doing such incredible things for like, equality in the surf space. I mean, she was on the, yep. the lines of that. Like, she was literally texting me from the courthouse recently when they got, you know, the equality passed. Wow. Um, oh, that's beautiful in Hawaii? Wow. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. so dope. That's yeah. great. Was, I miss KK, man. She's she's amazing. Heart, that girl, heart I swear to God, if you want a poster child for somebody with grit and resilience, I mean, she's the poster child. Totally. It's Kayala Kinley, the woman who surfs in Tahiti, and then and then and then break cracks her head open, gets it stapled shut. And then goes back out there. <laughs> I know, <laughs> dude. And remember when Sanoi taught us the trick on how to how to how to close a cut with duct oh, yeah. tape and super glue? Yes. <laughs> well, because I still have the scar on the bottom of my foot here. This entire flap, I <laughs> cut it, it flapped open, and they were like, "We need you surfing," and that's when they assigned me the lifeguard. Um, Grumman stitches. <laughs> They took me, they're like, you need stitches. I'm like, and I'm not going to be able to be in the water for two weeks. I'm like, super He's like, nah, give me, some soup, give me some super glue and some duct tape. I got this, man. <laughs> Put it all in there. I have a scar as well on my, um, like, on the back of my ankle from, like, ripping open my back of my, my Oh, yeah. God, so many cuts. So many cuts. Yeah, and it was a spot where the leash kept ripping open. I get the heebie-jeebies just thinking about that. There's that's the one thing that I, that that really gets me crazy. <laughs> is is like open slicing of skin. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a next TV show. 
Oh my god. Paper cut. Let me into the surgery room while they open somebody up. Oh my god, I go nuts. I think I'd rather get punched than get a paper cut any day. Else. Yeah, yeah man. Man. Seriously. This is a good one. What did what did you guys do after filming was done for the day? Any wild stories? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 come on, guys. Oh, we don't. I mean, really? What's going on? We, uh, we, I mean, Michelle would go to town sometime. You didn't go all the time. But I just can't believe that you even went at all because of how radical our work schedule was. I mean, we were up before. You can blame that on KK. It's all Kayala's fault. Kayla, She's the one who dragged me out and showed me everything that there Kayla was to do the in best. Hawaii at night. She's the best. She has a heart of gold, too, that one. Like, yeah, seriously, heart of gold. It was yeah, so they, and then we played a lot of chess. I yeah. mean, I think we'd like, you know, we'd always take like a long bath after, and then we would sit. I remember sitting out on our balcony a lot, and we ate a lot of ice cream. <laughs> we were so tired. We were so tired by the end. <laughs> tired at the end of the day, and I was like, I was just like shell shocked. <laughs> I just, I just did that. I survived another day. Yeah, the soreness was a lot to deal with from all the workouts and the paddling and all of that. Like, um, I couldn't deal with all that lactic acid. It was killing me. We couldn't do that now. That that pace is meant for a 20 year old. Like, young, early, you know, late teens, early 20s were, were like. Come on, Brock was in his, Brock was in his, like, you know, what, late 40s when he was, do, when he was teaching us? Like giving, make, giving us the workouts and stuff. What? He's only 35, 36. <laughs> oh, it must be the sun. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Oh man, are we live? Is this being recorded? <laughs> I love Brock. He's dope. He's the best. He, oh. he, he was, he was an awesome, awesome guy. Yeah, man. Um, all right, guys. What about? I'm trying to, I don't know how to say this exactly. Me and Robinette said, did you really start to type on it? Hell no, I didn't. Megan Abubo did my stuff. I was, um, I didn't surf it, but I was, I was out there. And you I were was, out there. There's one part in the movie that um, is like me coming up over the lip. Yeah. That shot. <laughs> that was that really shot. Is that, that's legit. Like you, that was, Dude, I totally thought she was gonna eat it, man. I mean, I was so scared for you. Oh, I have chills. That was gnarly. That was that was like the closest I was to getting caught inside pipeline. And I remember, like, because all the stuff right water, 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 pipe masters were stunned. You know, it was like yeah, it was and it was Craig, it was all those guys. And like, I remember one of them just like push my board like up over the lip to get me over. Like we got to get her over. I remember walking in real time. You were oh, I, remember, I was more on the channel. I surfed pipe, but I I wasn't in the scenes of surfing pipe because I my character wasn't competing at pipe. So whenever we we're out there my snaggle a little wave. Actually Pete Johnson, Jack Johnson's brother, pushed me into a few really dope bombs that I remember like, paddling out from catching one of those through the channel and I remember looking over and just seeing this bomb set come from the outside and and Kate is, and I, she looks over and I'm looking at her and I'm like, and oh, he just looks snap. out and she just starts going and he literally, he literally did. He just shoved her board and she literally went flying up and over. That, that feeling is a feeling that every single surfer when they're out mm -hmm. on a big solid day feels and that adrenaline is so real that mm -hmm. like, cause it's, it, it is, it's, it's a, it's that pivotal point of like, like if you're in like two or three more feet, that lip could easily, it's, it's top to bottom at pipe. It's so critical out there. Yeah, it's so yeah spines could get snapped. Oh, I have chills. That, that, I remember that. I remember, like, I remember in that shot, you see me, like I can climb over, I think it was all that, like back. You're like a red doll. I was. Yeah. I actually like turn back and look at it because I was like, like literally that was one of the most afraid I ever was. Like, that was, that was, yeah. that was you know what's beautiful is that is that John was able to capture that at least in the story um, that that you know the understanding that there's there's these kind of like few seconds that people go out there and they surf their entire lives for and in these few seconds you kind of get this sense of like eternity 
because it's a moment where you question your own mortality, whether you're going to live, whether you're going to die, whether you're going to get hurt. Um, but at that moment, you're battling something that has to do with fear. And, and it's, it's the make or break in you mm -hmm. that lets you decide either you're going to be good at what you're doing or you're going to fail. And, and, and I love the way that they drew that into the into your story i think it was it's it's a beautiful testament to anybody who struggles with anything in life yep um there's always these blockages these blocks and they all have to do with fear in some way shape or form and 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 i just thought that was a really beautiful inspiring part of your storyline is is to battle that 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 um that given upness that's that people have inside that says i can't do something Yep. You know, that voice is so loud inside you. And I think he was able to capture how it is a voice inside you and how it can kind of play back in pivotal moments in your life when you need to do and take action in, 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 and move forward and what stops you. So I, I, I just really love Blue Crush. It was so good. And that, I think that's why it inspired so many women. Like, yeah, you know, like man. surfing in the past is such a male-dominated sport and it brought mm. this... You know, feminine energy. Oh my God. Four girls, I can't believe like how many women are like surfing now. Like I just saw a this woman off the off the coast of Portugal surfing the biggest waves in the world. Wow. Yeah, I thought they were in Waimea Bay, but they're uh, they're actually in in Portugal. And there's this cheek ass chick just like riding with the boys, and I'm like, yo, that's a hundred foot wave, dog. Like, <laughs> I don't know how the hell. What the hell? Is all this danger. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> this is beautiful. I love that. It We've is. Seen it that really 20 is. years ago. It really I mean, is. And whether it's surfing or any other sport, I think it's why it resonated with so many females and girls is because they saw it and they were like, oh, I can't. I can't do that. It, I can't do it. I mean, Kate, if anyone, you know, like you coming from somewhere that you're not near the ocean you didn't grow up near the ocean and be able to go and do that and conquer that fear and the, the sense of accomplishment that you get from that is so mm -hmm. empowering it feels so good and I think even you know male or female conquering that you know back to what Michelle was saying in that you know that adrenaline and you know the fear and, and living you know makes you feel alive I think that's why surfers are so addicted to surfing they really are you know, alive. Really. You know, it's like ah, I didn't yeah. just like keep pitching myself, make sure like this is real. Is this real? I, so. It's weird. I always say like that role out of almost all other roles, and I know it's kind of, it sounds kind of funny, but like I feel like I was like most like connected to that character almost more than any else because like I had just moved to, to LA to try and like live my dream of being you know creative and being an actor, and like you know she obviously had a dream and I had a ton of fear and she had a ton of fear and like. Um, yeah, it was, just, it was interesting to watch it back because you really saw all of it like on my face at all it times. Came and through, Michelle, because like the, the other thing I think that really resonates with people and what you guys brought so much to your roles is like the friendship. Is that like mm -hmm. you know when you doubt yourself and like you feel like I can't do this, I quit, I just can't do this anymore, whatever it might be. Yeah. Like, you have you know your your ride or die, your partners in crime saying like. I believe in you more than you believe in you. And like, we're going to, we're going to make this happen. Like, it's so beautiful to watch that. You know? totally. I've had that happen to me so many times in my life. And, and I can't, I can't say enough how, how important it is to have, to have people kind of come out and be like, I see you. Yes. And I believe in you. Yes. And um, even when you don't believe in yourself, it's a beautiful thing. Or you forget who you are. Your friends are like, that. Ah, oh man, this you can't do. You. You, can, you need your girl. Anybody sometimes. who does, anybody who says that they do anything in life alone on their own, <laughs> nothing yeah. on this planet happens without collaboration of yeah. some sort. Yeah. I don't care if you're wealthy. I don't care if you're poor. I don't care if you're building a house. I don't care if you're, totally. you know, selling books. We're communal. Nothing Creatures. happens yeah. without other people. And I've learned that more in quarantine than anything else. <laughs> I know, it's true. I'm going crazy. <laughs> I, one of my favorite lines
lines in the movie was, um, and I remember this resonating with me, like when I read the script, but, but particularly, you know, how it stands the test of time to today and resonates to today is like, you know, my character says, you know, she's talking to Matt Davis's character and, she, and he says, what do you want? And she says, you know, I want a girl to be on the cover of Surfer Magazine and it would be great if that girl were me, but any girl would do. And like, I love that line because the thing about the, the, there's so much female empowerment in the movie, but it really comes from, I want us all to succeed, not right. just me to succeed. It's like any girl mm. on the cover of Surfer Magazine is my dream. Is a plus. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I yeah. It's such a beautiful, and I think that's also what resonates with a lot of women watching the movie is that it really is like a communal, like feminist stroke, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, the thing is, is that they've always existed and always will exist and it'd just be nice you know, at, at that time, it was like this kind of like, hey, wait a minute, how come they're not represented in all the things that talk about this world? Right. Totally. And, and, and I've always felt that energy from KK. Yeah. You know, I always felt like she was carrying that torch, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And Rochelle and Megan and all those girls out there. I mean, you know, they live, the, they live you know, eat, sleep, and, and, and everything is the waves. Everything is surf. Yeah. yeah. And for them, you know, to take for it to have taken so long for them to like, you know, get some recognition for what they do, get yeah. sponsors and stuff. Yeah. It's quite it was quite sad back then in the early two thousands. I'm glad that that's changed. And yeah. you know what, John and and and, and 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 Brian, you know, God bless them for yeah. thinking. I of, know. You know, it's really sweet. Yes. Yeah. So and, you know, dope. I often think yeah. that like, I often am so grateful for their leadership as well because that could have been such a TNA movie. Like, totally. I mean, like literally, I didn't, even, <laughs> I didn't even think that way, like signing up because I was like, I saw what like I read, but as we all know in all the movies and all the experiences that we've had, like in someone else's hands, like, can you imagine? Like- It's all, I think honestly, yeah. it all comes down to love. Yes. And, and like I say this and it may sound corny as hell, but I, I, I know this from experience. I've worked on big movies and teeny ones that go nowhere. I know the difference. And the difference is when you have someone who's talented and also really, really loves what he's talking about or she's talking about in the feature. Yep. And that love goes a long way because it brings that light that you bring when you're excited about catching a wave yep. or you're excited about a shot. It, yep. It's contagious. Your happiness yep. and your joy for wanting to tell a story or see yep. it from a certain perspective, that's what gets the entire pyramid that makes the movie happen excited and makes it glow. Totally. And John had that and yep. Brian had that on yep. set because you know you had a bunch of girls who were really, really stoked to be there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were really, really committed to wanting to bring the North Shore and its on authenticity to the big screen, which yeah. is really hard to do. It's yeah. really hard to do, especially with surfing being such a niche culture so hard but i think we have a good balance it. we keep we all keep each other yep. in check you know yeah. <laughs> yep. we all have different <laughs> energy but it like we are so different and then somehow it just, we're oh, so we different but like it's it, it's we can blend work. well though yeah. we've got good vibes perfect it, michelle it yeah. does go it, i think that that triangle is like because sometimes i get asked like oh did you guys all get along and i was like you know it all came from from love from each of us yeah, yeah. No, yeah, like, we were really sweet. Our ways, but like we all were like so it was all love, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we had so much fun. I mean, it was so fun. I mean, it was hard oh. work. It was so fun. Okay, so what? one of the questions is to your point, Sunoy. Um Mac eight one four four says, What was okay, what was the hotel it was filmed at? It looks like Turtle Bay Hilton. And ah! <laughs> they wanna know about Who gets it. They wanna know about the like, you know housekeeping sequences and the condom sequence. Oh, <laughs> dude. Yo, I swear well, to myself, I swear to myself that I would never play a maid. You know, here's the three things that I never do. I never play a maid. That. I was like, I'm not Never play that. a drug dealer and uh, don't ever get raped in a movie. <laughs> No. So those are the three things I'll never do. Uh, and, and then, but for some strange reason, I didn't feel like these kids were really working. <laughs> no. Dude, no. watch the movie again. And it is, the, okay, so this, cause I kind of forgot. It's so great. I, I forgot about that, Michelle. I remember, remember that with the toilet and the throw up. And then 
and they made the throw up look so, so bad. So bad. And Michelle didn't want to put the maid costume on. I remember there was a talk John was having. She was yeah, because like, I'm not going to wear that. I can't be a maid. I can't. I can't. I'm not. I don't Hell know, no, man. I don't, you know, and then I you grew up with them. Spanish soap operas, man. Yeah. But it, it, you know, it worked in the scenes because you were so pissed to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was real. That was real. And, she was like, oh, so and boy, there's one moment where like, I don't know if you remember this and I had forgotten it until I watched the movie again last night where we're like cleaning the windows outside and we were like putting our mouths up against the glass and like blowing. Oh. <laughs> making blowfish. Yeah, making blowfish faces. And you and I, I remember for some reason, I thought that was like, laughing for like <laughs> it was like a problem filming because I like literally couldn't stop laughing in that scene they're like okay girls yeah. okay okay yeah, done, was okay uh -huh. it's funny, like, no, no, no. <laughs> You guys were goofs. We had, we had so I love it though. Much fun. <laughs> Quest side, and it's not Aulani, which is the Disney Hotel. Right. But it I, wasn't Turtle like, Bay. It wasn't Turtle Bay. No, we were on the West Side, and I don't know if it's like what the Four Seasons is now, or but it's it's in that vicinity. It was one of those hotels out wow, there. Wow, they put a Four Seasons on the West Side. Oh, it's beautiful too. It's it's literally it? right next door to the Disney Aulani. It's the Disney Aulani, and you can walk to go over to the Four Seasons next door. So it, it might have oh, wow. been the what the Four Seasons is now. Beautiful hotel. I wish we were I remember there now. the so West we Side. We could go right now. I remember the West Side was always so territorial that, like, if oh. you weren't if you weren't on the West Side with like a local, you know what I mean? It'd be like Ryan. Thank God you're a woman, or you might get into a throwdown fight <laughs> with the boys because they're pretty gnarly over there. Because McCall are my favorite wave to surf. And do you remember you guys? We would go and swim down with the turtles. Oh, that was so great! great. That was so, so great. Nice. Oh, yeah, so walking I'm... underwater. Yeah, with the with the rock. Well, that was the other thing that sometimes I get asked or like ask about that scene, and I'm like that. A lot of the times, John would just be like, "Just shoot." Like, I mean, I was training so often, and he's like, "Just shoot Kate while she's training." And they're like, "Well, she's not in the right outfit." And he's like, "It won't matter. No one's gonna be looking at that." And then we would just like we literally we would just film things. Yeah. We were doing, you know. Yeah. 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 That was great. Was... Great sequence. So beautiful. So great. Best film ever to make when we're just in the ocean in Hawaii. It's, uh, Amelia, Amelia in Ostraza says, hi, what is your favorite scene to film and watch? My favorite scene to film was the stuff on the jet skis. The, <laughs> the jet skis. You love that jet ski, man. All that, you yeah, love that man. Give me a motor, man, and I'm at home. Yeah. I even remember you standing on the back, like the thing that you hang on to, and like you were, you were like in your squat, like surfing on it. You love the jet ski. <laughs> that was like the jet skis came out. Michelle's like, okay, now we're having fun. Like, literally yeah. Her eyes were like, was like, oh, um, <laughs> what's the favorite? I mean, I think my some of my favorite scenes. Well, I loved the scenes that we would shoot at our little house, at our little beach house that we lived in, because that was yeah. really rad and real. Like, yeah. I remember enjoying that because when we were at the beach it was so guerrilla style and, and radical totally. like it was like okay go go and it was like yeah. there were so many elements and we would we'd be in the ocean for long periods of time where they had those big barrels of warm water for us to jump into because we yeah. come in, our lips would actually be blue i mean yeah. case lips really so we would jump we'd run and i just remember watching you know i have this visual of michelle running across the beach and she could get in there <laughs> you know and you just see her head poking out of the barrel you know um, <laughs> And I did, you know, my favorite scenes to watch would be the pipe ones because they're just so yeah, real. Powerful. But the fil filming wise, I liked when we were filming at our little house. It was like, oh, this is relaxing. Like, oh, okay, we could go sit in the chair. Like, Michelle, you and I played a lot of chess. Yeah. Over the trailer while we're waiting. And I just, I liked those days a lot. Yeah. And it was fun. I mean, so much of it was like, we lived that life anyway. It was like we totally. were living in the same house. It was like then we'd go shoot in a small, like a smaller house, and it was a, basically what we were like anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Totally. Totally. So, yeah, that was And that is so real. That house was was, I mean, the set design team, the yes. props, everyone nailed it on this film. Because that is, you know, one of my best friends, Daisy, and I, we rented, she rented a house at Rocky Point. And I mean, it looked so similar to that. You know, the single wall construction with the metal tin roof and stuff that no one can afford to really fix. So they just kind of leave the leaky faucet. Like that is so real to what the North Shore is like. Now, obviously there's bigger homes that have been built and 
you know, everyone has Pinterest and like does their house, you know, proper. But back then it's like you throw a sarong over your window for a curtain and call it done. Yeah. And you all you care about is surfing. And that was captured so well. That is so real. I mean that yeah. house was oh, I mean the was Oh the car! The car! That was good. Oh, the car was good. That was like a car. Oh, that old ass car. <laughs> That was so great. Amazing. Oh my God. And that was, was so great. So cute as well, you know? I mean, it was like all all of those choices were like, the, it was like reflecting on the characters, you know? Yeah. I oh, I look back and I just, I'm, I'm so grateful to have been a part of the film. And um, the, we just, when we were doing it, I had no idea. Yeah. No idea that it would have been what it was. You know, we're just out there doing this scene. Okay, like whatever. It's this is our job for the day to show up and do this scene and, and seeing it all come together collectively at the end and the edits and the music. And I really got to say, so you know, I, I, I miss, I miss that vibe period in I film know. period. Like I just I feel like nothing, everything's either too goofy or not real enough. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just really sweet to have a thing that you can escape with. To some other, you know, kind of beautiful place that's that's full of water and summer and nature and, and, and well, and that's like, and, you know, they were good. I heard talks that Brian was going to do a Blue Crush TV series. I was like, Brian and John Stockwell should team up again and recreate that well, whole yeah. vibe and flow. With, yeah, you know, know what? It's it's something about there not being anything on television or film. Yeah. that captures the lives of people who live in summer places and who are in love with the waves. Unique, with the, the unique ocean. experience. Unique, and, and it's, not, it's not some beautiful girl pretending to like surfing. It's about, right. it's it's about the lifestyle yeah. and it's about the beauty of nature and how the ocean captivates people so much so that they dedicate their lives to being near the ocean. Yeah. And that's a whole demographic of people around the world that aren't being yeah. served anything. Yeah. I mean, would they get like a European version of Point Break, like a bunch of guys trying to look cool and robbing banks? And I'm like, uh, the lighting was really off in this one. I want that Hawaii light, man. That like beautiful sunshine and that beautiful blue. Well, they just don't get it anywhere. We maybe we maybe need to need to talk and, and recreate something. Well, listen, no, but literally the number one question I like, couldn't even have a talk like because it was like so many people. Everybody wants to know would we <laughs> what what. Everybody wants to know, would we be up for a sequel? Yes, obviously. I would totally, man. I you girls, I love you, girl. A hundred percent. And I love Hawaii. You don't have 100%. to ask me twice. I mean, neither. I was like, are you kidding me? I'm like, let's make it Duh. Happen. Get the little kids in surf camp. We're teaching them right? something. Yes, <laughs> right? I'll put my life on the line again. I don't mind for a secret. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go out. Well, right? I think we could we 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 could probably be like uh, the teachers in this one, huh? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. At least jet ski. Coach. At least some jet ski time. Come on. Coaches I doing some, some philanthropy. You know, some philanthropy. Like we could be definitely. We there's there's things we could do. We could we could sit and. Create yeah, something. I mean, right now, I think the, the big thing in the in that world is the preservation of of the biosphere. Yeah. And I think yep. that you know, Mother Nature is like hurting because of all the things that we've been doing. You know, as a society, as a global population, 100%. and there's there's definitely room to explore how that's affecting the world of of people who really live in nature, and that's what they dedicate their lives to. Like, how do yep. they feel about what the world's doing to the planet. Oh um, yeah. And what are there's, they doing about it? I'm sure there's tons of, you know, I, I know a couple of organizations that, you know, are just fighting teeth, tooth and nail to like try to yeah. preserve whatever they can, you know? Well, yeah, but 80%, 80% of the fish gone yeah. in 50 years. How do you do yeah. that? Yeah. How, how's well, that even, how's that all even the GMO, smart? All how's the GMO testing, smart? Like, I know. Like just intelligence wise, like how's that even smart? Like, do you think that like maybe, you know, we should like reevaluate <laughs> <Seriously>. everything? <laughs> can I come up with that point, Michelle? Can 
I take just a second to kind of tell everyone, like we can, I know everyone has to go, but I can just tell everyone sort of what Sir Ryder does as a seller. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's so important to what you, what you just said, which is, okay, so this is their mission statement. Um, the Surfrider Foundation is dedicated to the protection and enjoyment of the world's oceans, waves, and beaches for all people through a powerful activist network. Mm. Um, and they fight for reducing the amount of plastics in the marine environment, which is mm. huge, especially now with, you know, obviously having to have so much PPE for our protection. It's like, I feel like they're fighting for the protection of the marine environment and the plastics in the oceans. Um, ocean protection, defending our oceans from challenges threatening the vitality of the ecosystem. And clean water, protecting the health and sustainability of our planet's most precious resource. Um, I need to support worldwide ocean protection and consciousness among, amongst the things. So, um, you know, I'm so grateful to them and their work. So good. To highlight what they do and, um, you know, we, we support them. Yes, thank for you. Sure. Yeah. God bless. So beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yes. And you guys, I know, I know you, I could talk to you guys all day, but I know Michelle, you have a heart out. So I'm watching the clock a little bit. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. It's really um, sweet of you. Cause me, I don't, I don't really have a watch. <laughs> my time is like, I'm like Sonoy. I'm like, on I know. I'm like, I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Well, let's do too. this again. We'll yeah. do more. And yes, so, please. So great to see you guys. Kate, thank you so much for setting this up. I mean, yeah, if we haven't this done awesome. this sooner. Thank you for being the catalyst. Thank you for setting this up. Yeah, it puts for, a big smile on my face to see your faces. I know. I love you girls so much. Mm -hmm. I always say you guys are like forever a part of like my heartbeat, like regardless of how long it's been since I've seen you. It's the real deal. Equally okay. so. <laughs> I love you girls so I love much. You guys. Bye, love, love you too. Bye. <laughs>